Hello, it's Chaplin73. Uh, you're joining me again today for another artist interview. Uh, thank you for joining in. Uh, today I'm with Jimmer Wilmot. Hi, Jimmer. Hello, how are you doing? Yeah, not bad. Uh, I, I'm going to try and find out a bit more about you and what you're all about. So I will crack on with the first question. Um, who are you? What do you do? And where are you based? So um, my name is Jimmer Wilmot. I'm a Bristolian, Bristol born and bred artist, stroke weirdo, and uh, so this is my studio, which is actually my bedroom, mm -hmm. so uh, the laptop's actually on my bed just there, um, it's quite nice to get out of bed and just sit at the desk just here, um, so yeah, so that's what I do, mm -hmm. um, at the moment I work, I work a full-time job um, daily, and I'm working in between those hours, every day little bubbles of time to paint and draw so yeah. i'm a pop surrealist artist so it's the bastard hybrid sort of love you know bastardized love child stroke test tube baby of salvador dali and warhol splurged together um a lot of pop surrealists uh like a lot of the american sort of pop surrealists that i that i love they're, um, some of their work's really, really dark and, and punchy. Um, mm -hmm. I like to like keep my work um, quite neon and punchy in that way. Yeah. But I'm really influenced by the pop surrealist strip lowbrow scene. Mm -hmm. Brilliant. Um, that, that's a great description of your work. Um, yeah, it just about sums it up, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, 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 what or who do you think has influenced your art and your style? Um, you've obviously mentioned the pop surrealists. Who, who's really got you into or into the art that you do? There's so many people that have like had me juiced since I uh, since I've been painting, and um, so many people. So, I mean, you know, all the Bristol graffiti artists, UK-based mm -hmm. graffiti artists like just some of the things that you know like growing up i suppose you can see like when i was younger i could see that you know other artists were just doing what they wanted to do yeah and i think like a lot a lot of kudos to them um mm -hmm. later on i got into people like uh robert williams uh, american lowbrow artist he really really like blew my mind right. um so I just, I just love like a lot of American artists, people like Crayola Simpkins, mm -hmm. uh, Ron English. Um, I'm absolutely, going back to graffiti, I'm absolutely obsessed with um, and highly influenced by Sweet Tooth's work. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, and I just really just love like dipping in and out of pop culture and you know looking at the i'm trying to like always combine uh, like the um the cute with the weird like the sweet with the sour yeah, yeah. And put that together and um my work's like really really pun based mm -hmm. so um so any like artists that had like you know like artists i can see other artists i can see like really making commentary like that i i'm like totally obsessed with yeah 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 i mean I, the one behind you the police officer with the donut as the face i i love those paintings i, I think they're they're amazing and and you know it, it's kind of like your your stereotype of an american police officer is somebody you know driving through traffic lights to get to the donut store stand and you kind of you know you've just captured it in that in that image it's just it, I just love it I just love it it's, um... it's it's a snapshot it's it says so much but not doing a lot if that makes sense yeah, this, yeah. One I'm doing, this one here I'm really struggling on Darren because um it's just driving me wild because the the sprinkles I never knew sprinkles were going to be that annoying. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I'm getting there slowly with them. Really, I, I, think really I, I think I really um, like them because I used to be a baker and I used to do the confectionery line for a large bakery company. 
and I used to decorate their donuts and, and see, seeing it as a police officer's face is just, you know, <laughs> just funny for me. Did you used to eat a lot of them? <laughs> yeah, probably. I'm, I'm not, I got, I got to a point, I got to a point where I was frying 2000 a night and I just got fed up of the sight of donuts. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm not trying to like say that you, you know, you're overweight or anything here. <laughs> no, no, no. Uh, but but yeah, it, it, it was was one of the one of the problems of uh, working with donuts is, is that you tend to eat far too many of them. Um, so, what advice would you go back and give to your younger self about art? That's a really good question. Um. What I would say is, like, I think we're all ready at some point to actually take a bit of a challenge. But I feel like sometimes you've got to mature, you've got to go through all these things to get to it. Mm -hmm. um, so my advice, really, I mean, the only thing I wish I would have done is I was like a really heavy drinker at one point, And I spent years and years just heavily intoxicated, living the party life. And I suppose I would just go back and tap that younger self and, and on the back and say, hey, there's a there's an easel somewhere waiting for you. There's a paintbrush. Yeah, I think, yeah. uh, but I think in so many ways you need to go through that and you need to arrive to that point. Um, I just really wish that I would have tackled those, uh, you know, really hard things like, that's the thing. It's like you've got if you want to improve at painting, drawing, or whatever your craft is, you really need to go through those quality control sort of moments of mm -hmm. looking what you're doing and learning a lot. So I guess I, I guess it would be less party and learn more and, mm -hmm. and, and do the difficult things. Don't do the easy things. I was doing the easy things for so many years and and it was great, but you know. <laughs> I don't know, really. Uh, that's a that that's a mantra for life, isn't it? Less party, learn more. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but then again, like all the um, all the all those times I'm gonna have it as well. All those times of uh, party, and I I wouldn't have uh, wished it any different, actually. Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, sometimes it's your life and your experience that makes you. I mean, I'm. I'm I've had some terrible things happen to me in the past, but I'm glad that I've lived through them to get where I am now because I'm happy with where I am now, if you know what I mean. And, and, and I know that, you know, I've watched Back to the Future and if you go back and change things, things end up completely different. <laughs> get to the clutch, I was in the flux capacitor, Marty. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. I don't want to go back and change anything because it might really alter where I am now. So. Um, talking about time travel um if you could spend a day with another artist living or dead at any point in history um who would you choose and why and what would you get up to um it would be i think it'd be keith Haring. yeah i think it would I, a, de I think, a day in the underground i think it's the excitement of his work that and the buzzle of that time in New York. Yeah, yeah. The, you know, the decay of the city at the time and everything else and, and what he really did. And I just think his work's so energized and so punchy. And yeah, just to, just to be around and, and see his, you know, inspiration, I guess. Um, yeah, because I think it's like a really, I think it was like a really cool time in, in art, art history. Yeah, definitely. And I, I think the energy of the guy himself, I think, would um, would definitely give you an entertaining day. Um, he was painting on these black, um, so what the story was originally with his work, I think, is there were these advertising boards, wasn't there, in the, in the subway, and when they had no advertisement to go in there, they would put, they would like glue black, um, they would glue on the back board, like yeah. just, um, they would just glue black on it, like black uh -huh. sheets. And I think that's how it started off, by drawing these. Yeah, he'd just know. go around with chalk, wouldn't he? And 
That's right. That's right. And yeah. He, sure. he would do. He would do like hundreds in a day. You just go around and draw all these amazing things just really really quickly jump 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 done and go off and do another one it's absolutely so stunning to watch it's like and he's so good I, I don't know he's so good to hang out with him really yeah yeah definitely and a very interesting time like you say you know um i think you would have you would have experienced quite a lot in 24 hours back then <laughs> so so having said that what's in store for jimmer wilmot um, what have you got coming up? What have you got future plans? Anything you want to share with us? I'm in this sort of, uh, I'm in this junction of, um, I've been working towards this for ages. And I'm in this kind of um, mo moment where I'm still working, mm -hmm. but I have so much energy to give, you know, so much artwork that doesn't get painted that I really could just, I think I could just paint all day yeah. and all night and have still enough energy. And so I'm getting closer and closer. It's a, it's a work in progress, a lot like a painting. Mm -hmm. And um, so I'm really, this year, I want to be painting um, full time. I don't want to be going to work anymore. I want to be painting my work. Yeah. And, um, and so... It's a bit hush hush on, on the quiet at the moment, but um, hopefully, if all this COVID garbage kind of fox drops Oscars, um, hopefully, there should be a show in America. I won't say much more about it at the moment, yeah. but um, fingers crossed, there's going to be a show with, uh, with four artists in America mm -hmm. soon. So yeah. that's what the store. Um, yeah. Oh, and I've, I've got a print run coming out. It's dropping tomorrow. Brilliant. All of my prints are, um, they're only limited to 10. Mm -hmm. um, I, I've always done that. Uh, people get, get a piece of art that's really limited. It's not yeah. the original, but it's real limited. And um, this is my, my recent one in homage to the, the Tories. Uh, and it says, Politicians stole my lunch money. Yeah, and that's, okay. that's the sort of government we've we've got going. So this is like a painting of alphabet spaghetti, as you can see. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, no, just just working really hard this year to try and push out some shows. Really, mm -hmm. yeah, I'm excited. I mean, again, again, that picture with the alphabet spaghetti, the social commentary within that picture is just perfect. It's just you know. Alphabet spaghetti, what better thing to write that with? Um, you know, lunch money. The typical lunch of many a young child growing up was alphabet spaghetti. And, you know, <laughs> you've just captured that and um, and turned it into a, a piece of art. Amazing. The, um, the, the idea behind it um, was for a show uh, inspired by Banksy. Mm -hmm. um, and it was for the Think Space um, in California. Right the Miami Scope Art Show and for like six months I struggled to to like pay homage to, to Banksy in that sort of sense. That was the, the the show wasn't about Banksy's work it was the feeling of what sort of Banksy it was called the value of what was it the value of nothing no the, the value of nothing and the price of everything I think right. the show. And so to pay homage to Banksy is like a massive inspiration to me. Mm -hmm. um, it, uh, anyway, um, I was in bed one night, just about to drift off. I'm still thinking about it. And I had booked a day off work to, to paint all day and I still didn't have anything to show for it. And I was just drifting off and I thought, alphabet spaghetti. And then I thought, politicians stole my lunch money. That's the sort of thing you know, Banksy would, would write. And then a few weeks sort of, um, you know, a few weeks passed. Mm -hmm. And fucking hell, the Tories stole the fucking lunch money. <laughs> Talking yeah. about Back to the Future, it's like, <laughs> fucking hell. <laughs> and then, um, yeah, I was speaking to Guts about it. Um, yeah. 
you know, speaking to Guts, my best mate, the artist Guts. And um, he, and then he reminded me, he reminded me, he was like, fucking hell, you, you yeah. said that weeks ago. <laughs> that was crazy. Brilliant. Yeah. Brilliant. Art imitating life, imitating art. <laughs> so, yeah. It's been a pleasure to catch up with you, Jim. Oh. Um, um, I, I, I've seen your work online for many, many years, and um, I, I think it's, you know, I, I, I love it. Uh, I'm a big fan, and um, keep up the good work. Um, Thank you so much. Much, much the same as yours. I've been, I've been um, loving what you've been posting on Instagram lately. Brilliant. Cheers. Yeah, no, I'm loving it. Um, I will catch up with you soon and look forward to seeing um, a bit more news about this exhibition in America. Oh Fingers yeah, crossed. super excited about it. Yeah, <laughs> it's going to be a good one. No, no, uh, thanks for spending your time today. It's, it's been a pleasure. No, no, I, I, I'm so grateful anyway to, um, yeah, thank you. Thank no, you no worries. No worries. <laughs> it's well and if you liked what you've seen today or what you've heard today, then please subscribe to my channel um, by hitting the subscribe button below and um, I'm hoping to interview quite a lot more artists over the next few months and um, so tune in and listen to the new interviews as they come along. Thanks a lot. <laughs>